Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to link these two in the description, but I have a, a, a previous, an immediately previous video on slope and slope intercept form, what they mean. So uh, that's kind of a precursor to this video. Uh, step one. Find the slope between the points 1, 7, and 3, 11. And then, after that, we're going to graph the line. But instead of using points to graph the line, we're going to graph them with using the slope-intercept form. Find the slope. Until you get incredibly good at it, I would recommend that you constantly are writing this stuff down. I'm like, yeah, but I know it. Do you really? Do you really? Write it down. See if you can remember it. Uh, I'm going to call this point 2. I'm going to call this point 1. Again, in the previous video, we mentioned it doesn't matter which one you call. Uh, point 2 and point 1. Just label one of them. So here, we have uh, y2, which is 7, minus y1, which is 11, divided by x2, which was 1, minus y2, which is 3. This is going to give us a negative 4 over negative 2, which gives us a value of 2. So our slope has a value of 2. To interpret this, we look at it, the slope as a fraction, and m then would be 2 over 1. And this says I go 2 units up as I go 1 unit to the right. All right, so we got that. Not a bad, not a bad deal. Now, graph the line using one of the points, doesn't matter which one, and the slope of the line. So, be, just be simply because it's a little closer to the center, I'm going to use 1, 7 as my starting point. I also don't really have an 11 on my graph, so that's the other reason. Um, let's see, let's use dark orange here. So, we're going to start our, our line at the point 1, 7. And then I'm simply going to use my slope. I'm going to go up to from 1, 7. And then I'm going to go to the right one. And I'm going to put a dot. Now I have two dots. You can craft the line. You just need two. So <laughs> I can just smell it. I've, I've probably said this several times before in other videos. I, I know that there's going to be teachers out there just like, why are you teaching them that? Ah, they need to have three. Okay. It's a good idea to have three. <laughs> it's not a requirement, but it's a good idea. Um, it only takes two points to determine a unique line. That, that's it. No other line can pass through these two points without just somehow making a curve, in which case it's not a line. Uh, so the third point is actually a checkpoint. Your instructors and teachers may not tell you that, but that's really what it is. So if you wanted to make a third point, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and make a third point right now. but I'm, And I'm doing it primarily to show you that you don't have to use the slope exactly the way it's, it's given to you. You can change it somewhat without changing its value. So here, I'm going to take the slope as being negative 2 over negative 1. And you're like, well, you can't do that. Well, I have a positive value on my slope here. If I take a negative and I divide it by a negative, I have a positive value on my slope there. Well, why didn't you reduce it? Because um, because I don't have anywhere to go to the right and up. I, I just don't have enough room. So if I rearrange it a little bit and, and still make it the overall same sign, but change the signs, this tells me that I go negative 2. The sign tells you which direction. It doesn't tell you how many steps. It tells you which direction you're headed. In this case, down. The sign tells you which direction you're headed. In this case, left. So instead of going up 2 and right 1, I can go down 2 and left 1. And there's a third point. Oh, look. I can draw the line and sing the song. There we go. And all three points are on the line, which is good, because if two of them were and one of them wasn't, something bad happened. Now, which one's wrong? I don't know. <laughs> but something's bad. Something bad happened. 
So uh, this is just one way that you can graph these. You could have just used the two points and graphed them that way. That's fine. Uh, sometimes you'll be given the rate or the slope, and then you'll be given a starting point. And from there, you can actually graph the line and what it's going to look like. So just kind of keep that in mind. I hope this helps. Take care.